Hello, hello. So good um good evening once again, fellow teachers, fellow OLET examinees. So kamusta naman po kayo for today? Kamusta ang time? Are you having a good time or dinner right now? Are you all good, great, amazing? Yes. So definitely, I am seeing your responses here for the licensure examination for teachers. So please invite, 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 invite your friends and families and even your colleagues to watch our final coaching session for today. So I'm pretty sure that you are all good and amazing right now and you really want to pass the licensure examination. That's why you're here. So come on, tag your friends and let's watch the final coaching here at Rio Top the Lead. So by the way, my name name is Sir Glenn, so I'll be your instruct, uh, instructor, mentor for today's lesson, the final coaching for curriculum development. And let's start this thing. Let's start, start our discussion right for professional education. Okay, so come on, guys. Come on, teachers. Invite your classmates before we start with our coaching session because we will have you achieve certain targets for the licensure examination. Okay, so good evening to all of you. So earlier, we just had our review session for the principles and strategies for teaching. But right now, we'll be focusing more on the final coaching for the curriculum development. So it's part of the table specifications, one of the lead competencies. So I just want you to make the most of the situation right now. So please, I want you to participate in this uh, discussion. So I, just like in the usual strategies for the curriculum development, so please tune in, subscribe, and please enroll to our review session, okay? So my name is Sir Glenn, so I'll be your uh, mentor for today. So let's start for the final coaching session. So are you ready? <laughs> so definitely you're all ready right now because no one can stop a heart, a blaze heart in getting that license because that is something that you really want and be carve, uh, carving in your profession. So for this one, for the item rationalization, we have the professional education, curriculum development, uh, 40 items. Okay, so just like in the usual strategy, um, we have to target at least 75% of this. So 75% of 40 is 30 items. Okay, so 30 items. But, definite, uh, but for this one, I would like to ask you, do you want only 75? Okay, so definitely you want higher than that. So you have to score 32 or better. Okay, so I want you to score 32 and above in order to pass the licensure examination for teachers. Okay, and I want you to get your pen and paper and just write 1 to 40. Then I'll be posting some questions in here and you have to answer within the time limit. Then we'll rationalize 40. Uh, we'll rationalize and we'll give the answer. Why is that the answer? Okay, then uh, afterwards, I want to see if you have grown well in your lessons, in your licensure exams so please uh, have your scores posted later okay so good evening good evening good evening good evening to all of you so at the comforts of our home we're still reviewing just like what i said earlier no one can stop us from getting that license okay to become a registered professional or licensed professional teacher so let's start let's get it on break a leg for this Okay, so let's start with the first question, okay? So come on, tag your friends, tag your friends. It's still this, the initial part of stages. And let us us all be here in licensure examination for teachers. So for the first one, okay, so which of the following statements best defines the curriculum? Is it A, B, C, or D? 
Okay, I'll give you 40 seconds to answer this. Just write your answer to your respective paper or post this. Number one, A, for example. That's your answer. Come on, go. Here it is. Come on, I want to see your answers in here. Okay, boards up, boards up. Let's have the boards up. So what do you think is the correct answer? Which one best defines the curriculum? So the correct answer here is letter B. Very good. Wow, that's really nice. So we have your letter B. So it is a combination of instructional practices, learning experiences, and student performance assessment. Okay. So for this one, uh, let's say uh, th these options are plausible things or for plausible definitions of a curriculum, but we're looking with the, for the best. We're looking for the best definition. So we have here in other countries, no, that does not define, no. <laughs> it is unplanned, unguided, so no. So that means... <laughs> So the correct answer would be letter B. So it is a combination of instructional practices, experiences, and student performance assessments. Okay? Wow, talagang nakakuha ka agad, no? So that means that this really applies to your spirit kasi in the first place pa lang, no? Nakuha nyo na kaagad yung correct answer. That's really nice. So give yourself a good big hand. Yes, on the way to the top, 39 na lang. <laughs> okay, you already got the <laughs> this one. Okay, so next question. Next question, please. Okay, so Miss Natividad, a classroom teacher, wants to try to her class another strategy she has learned from a seminar work workshop she has attended. Which level of curriculum is shown in this situation? Okay, is it A, B, C, or D. So I'll give you 40 seconds to uh, encode your answers in here, just like number two. Tag your friends. It, we're still number two right now. Come on and write your answers here. Just key in your num the number and the letter of your answer. Key in the number and the letter of your answer. Wow, that's really nice. <laughs> okay, so this one, boards up, boards up, guys, boards up, teachers. So for this one, we have here the classroom teacher. Another strategy. So she has learned from her workshop. She has attended. So which level is shown in this situation? She has attended the workshop. Is it about instructional? Is it about experiential? Societal? Definitely, we can now eliminate societal. Institutional? Mm -hmm. It does not talk about the institution. Is it about instructional? It can be experiential. 
but for this one instructional that means uh, for the students uh, for the teachers to implement what has been learned inside the classroom but for this one he she does she wants to try this out so this one in a new setting and that means in her classroom so for this one the correct answer here is letter a very good that's all right so we have heard the letter a that's experiential learning exper experiential level of curriculum because she has already attended to the test and definitely she wants to try this out in the immediate setting that's why he has this okay so for the societal for the instructional level or instruction, this is for the classroom. No? This one is for the classroom. For institutional, this is for school level by which they plan out their instructions, the curriculum guides, and other things. And for this one, for societal, so for greater causes and activities, okay? For greater causes and activities, maybe for the government officials, organizations, the Department of Education, the society at large. Okay, so that means for this um, session, okay, for the levels of the curriculum. Okay, so the next one. So when the curriculum aims... When the curriculum aims to provide learners with needed skills in this ever-changing world, the curriculum reflects the belief that it should, is it letter A, B, C, or D? So timer starts now. Come on, come on, come on. Give your answers. Four, three, two, one. <laughs> okay, boards up, boards up, boards up. What's your answer? What's your answer to this? So it's letter. Is it? Is it? This one, for example, provide learners with needed skills. In this ever-changing world. So therefore, it's about the what? In this ever-changing world, it's what we have here, the social. So we have here the, is it about allow self-actualization? So no, because this one, it's about self. Self-expression, No. Does it about social thing? It's about culture, right? So therefore, the answer here is letter A. Okay? So the answer here is letter A. Wow, that's really nice. You're all improving right now. You're all improving in your situation and the things that you're going to do in our class. Okay? So, oh. What happened? Okay, just uh, for a minute. Okay. Wrong. Okay, so number four. It's number four. So we have here the, which are the characteristic of a good curriculum highlights the psychological nature of learners. Is it letter A, B, C, or D? Timer starts now.
Bakit ganun? <laughs> Ang cute mo mag-design. <laughs> Nako, food. <laughs> Nakita na. <laughs> How about number four? Sana all cute mag-discuss. <laughs> Okay, it's not working. I don't know for I don't know I don't know for a reason. Okay, so for this time, oh, boards up, boards up. What's your answer? What's your answer? Psychological, okay. So before we reveal the answer, so it talks about the psychological aspect. So that means the behavior of the child. So is it about this one? Does it talk about the extent several years? Mm -hmm. How about provisions are made for the smooth transition and the continuing achievement of pupils? Bonus number four. <laughs> Uh, what this one gives attention to the maturity in learning problems of students? How about cooperative learning? So this one, what is the psychological aspect? Areas, it's about the historical side, diba? Historical nature of the curriculum plan. And how, how about this one, the provisions made for smooth transition? Mm -hmm. It's about the personal side, no? How about gives attention to the maturity? This one is for the psychological aspect. How about for cooperative? It's about the teaching strategies. Okay. We have here the attention and maturity. Very good. So definitely it's letter C. Okay. So that means so that they, we have here to psychological nature. Which one tells more about the psychological aspect of learning? So we have to examine the choices closely. So we have here the extent over several years, vertically, historical kasi yun, di ba? So we have here smooth transition, maturity, this one, it's about the strategies, okay? Yeah, you're all right. Very good. Majority got the correct answer. Okay. Next one, next one. How about this number five? to build a sense of pride among Filipino youth, which should be done in the curriculum? Is it letter A, B, C, or D? Okay, boards up, boards up. Okay, so the correct answer is... Okay, so the correct answer for number five is... Uh, what should be done in order to increase our sense of pride? Is it about this one? To build, set aside? When we have to set aside kasi para bang we just... Ano? Make it stand by, right? So this, this should not be the answer. How about this one? Or study your history from their per perspective of colonizer. 
Mm-hmm. Where's the Filipino pride in there? <laughs> How about this one for letter C? Resta their history and achievements as a people. Yes. How about letter D? Replace the study of folklore with technical subjects. Is it about the uh, sense of pride? That means it's more about the the aspect of which we are in the Filipino. Okay. So we have here the study of folklore with technical subjects. So the correct answer here is letter C. Very good. So we have a letter C. We have to restudy our history and stress our achievements as Filipino. So this one, we have here the sense of pride among Filipino youth. And this is discussed over the history subject. And this one, for the sense of pride, this can be inculcated with them in stressing the things that we did previously, the, the things did by our heroes and the ancestors in order to gain our independence. So that means something that we can be proud of. Okay? Patriotism and nationalism. Yeah, that's all right. Okay, number six. Wow. <laughs> okay, so we are here number six. The function of schooling is determined largely by the generally accepted social conception of education. What is the function of the curriculum in a school that regards education as an agent of cultural transmission? Is it letter A, B, C, or D? So timer starts now. Accepted social conception of education. So what is your answer for number six? Okay. For number six, it's all about what? It's all about what? It's all about what? So this one, we have here the social conception of education. Then that regards as a cultural transmission. Cultural transmission. Is it about the removed social status stratification? Mm -hmm. How about break boundaries between social classes? Mm -hmm. Unify elements of various social classes. It can be this one, yeah. How about this one, unification? How about this, maintain boundaries and structure between our social classes? And definitely this one, it's about remove. So mostly it talks about the negativity or not leaning towards. So remove, it's we have the break. This one, maintaining boundaries. So, meaning just an enclosed figure, so just uh, only few, right? So, not the, uh, for this one, we have here to unify the elements of various social classes, but they have the distinct faces, okay? So, we have here the distinct faces for that, okay? So this one, we have here to unify the elements of various social classes, okay? So this is the social conception of education. Okay, so for this one, we have here the Mr. Jack, a curriculum consultant on economics insists that in selecting the curriculum content, economic geography concepts should be used for recurring and be repeated with depth 
for effective learning throughout the high school years? What criterion in selection and content selection is shown here? So let's say A, B, C, or D. So timer starts now. Okay, boards up, boards up. So what is your answer? Selecting the curriculum content uh, could be recurring and be repeated throughout high school years. So what's a, uh, what criteria and content selection is shown in here? So that means uh, the teacher insisting, no, selecting curriculum content and recurring be repeated through, uh, throughout the high school years. So what is something that we can uh, deselect or remove from this? Is it about the validity? So definitely it's not about validity. How about criterion? How about the learnability? Does it talk about the student? Does it talk about for the students? No. It talks about the subject, right? So this one, we are torn with letter A or C. So this one, can say it's incessant curriculum content selection. Recurring be repeated for the depth. Does it talk about the continuity? Does it talk about the significance? Although it's significant, that's why it has to be it has to be uh, spiraled throughout high school years. But but this one, if we have your D, what? It, runs, it should be spiral in such a way it is the sequence or the level. So therefore, this is in the aspect of the continuity throughout the uh, throughout the years. Okay. So we have here throughout the years continuity. Uh, that's why for leveling. Hint, we have where they are repeated. Okay, so number eight, so which is not a provision for the development of each learner in a good curriculum. Okay, so which is not a provision for the development of each learner in a good curriculum is it letter a b c d which is not a provision
Okay, so for this one, not a provision for the development of each learner in a good curriculum. Okay, so I see different answers in here. We have letter A, we have letter B, letter C, and letter D. Okay, self-independent study is encouraged whenever possible, is advisable. So definitely it's okay. Extension arrangements are made for educational diagnosis of individual learners. How about the programs provide wide range of opportunities for individuals with same abilities, needs, and interests? And how about self-motivation and self-evaluation are stimulated and emphasized throughout the learning opportunities of the school? So for this one, not a provision for the development of each learner. So that means that something that it violates the development process for each learner in crafting a curriculum. So this one is for the self-independence. So this is uh, one of the provisions because we have to make this self-directed and giving students the enough way to practice their skills. And we have here the concept of the GRR. Then for the, this one for educational diagnosis, for this one, uh, same abilities, so that means it's a one-size-fits-all. Do we have the activities for the one-size-fits-all with the same abilities and needs of student and needs and interests? So definitely, this is not a provision. And some stimulate that emphasis throughout the learning opportunities. So the correct answer here is letter. It's letter C. Okay, so we have here the provision for the wide opportunities with the same abilities, but because it's not with the same abilities, not all learners have the same abilities. Okay, so they are different. That's why, according to Howard Gardner, the theory of multiple intelligences. Okay. So for this one, so for number nine, so which of the following criteria in selecting content refers to the usefulness of information relative to the learners of the curriculum? Is it interest, significance, utility, validity? Mm, talagang may magtatap na. Magtatap ah. Uh, later on, I want to see your scores. Huh? Usefulness. Okay, so let's examine the stem of the question. So we have here the content refers to the usefulness of information. When we say usefulness, what does it pertain to? Usefulness. Does it talk about interest? Useful. Definitely in interest. Useful sa kanya, kaya meron siyang interest. Hmm? But it does not mean about interest. It's for the, it's for the something personal. Okay, so this is from person. This one is for object. Significance. Hmm. Mm hmm. Is it significant? Useful, shall because it's really the significant. <laughs> Can we say that? Useful, shall because it's a significant. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so let's leave it B for letter B. How about letter C, utility? Pwede, di ba? Pwede for utility. How about for validity? Usefulness of information? Hmm, not. 
not this one. Okay, so it's our, uh, we eliminate two uh, wrong choices. This narrows down our choices and increases and our chance of getting the correct answer. So which one is the correct answer? So the correct answer here is letter. Yes, that's all right. We're all correct. So we have your utility. The clue is we have here the usefulness. Therefore, it's utility. For the word is up, utility, usefulness. It is we can utilize this. Oh, it that means when we use the word utilize, it is really that useful you can utilize this we can use this so that's already the clue for the answer even though if you don't know the, the, the following criteria and selecting content but if you there's already the information in here then you can associate this with the word utility okay that's really nice very good Okay, so I think you're all ready. You're all for this one. So which of the following features of the curriculum is mismatched? Is it letter A, B, C, or D? Which of the following features of the curriculum is mismatched? So timer starts now. Okay, boards up. Lakas makakwiz bi, no? Anyway, so for this one, so we have here the so-called the features of a curriculum, okay? So for the features of the curriculum, so what do teachers teach, okay? So it's mismatch. So that we're looking for the option that is not correct, okay? Is letter A correct? What the teachers teach topics. What do teachers teach topics? Yes, yeah, siempre, de ba? So we have here what do teachers teach topics? Okay. So how about this one? Okay, so this one is already the mismatch to mismatch for this feature of a curriculum. Because what do teachers teach? We have here the topics. Actually, we have here the cap domains, the knowledge of uh, the the cap donates the cognitive, affective, and the psychomotor. To whom do teachers teach? We have here the learners. That's all right. How do teachers teach? It talks about the strategies and methods. Then how much uh, of teaching was learned? So it talks about the performance and the assessment. Okay. So for this one, even though it seemed too good to be true, but according to the six features of the curriculum, then what do teachers teach? We have here the knowledge, the skills, and the values. Okay. Then we have also other things. So for the fifth one, we have the who uh, teaches this one. We have here the teachers. And to whom we teach? 
and we have early community partners. So for the community partners, this includes the stakeholders, the stakeholders like the parents, administrators, policymakers, and even the learners. Okay. Next one. Okay, so which of the following is a Yes, very tricky. Uh, which of the following statements is characteristic of a good curriculum? Which of these following statements is a characteristic of a good curriculum? Why perfect wrong? Perfectly imperfect? Okay, so... This one. So, what is the correct answer? So, okay, elimination muna tayo. So, which of the following uh, statements is a character? Is it a is a characteristic of a good curriculum? So, all options are good to be true. Okay, so uh, make sure all options are good to be true. But for this question, it calls for the best one. <laughs> okay. So we have here the, it calls for the best one. So, so we say this, this one that these, is it about curriculum promotes continuity of experience? Fede. How about this one? A good curriculum reflects the aims of the school inadequately. Mm hmm how about this one, letter C, um, makes minimum provision? We have here the minimum provision for the development of each learner. This one, this is the keyword. How about this one? Utilizes the least effective experiences and resources, the available. Continuity of the experience. So the correct answer here is letter A. Okay. So this one we have inadequately, which is uh, not a characteristic. This one for maximum provision, this is the most effective learning experiences and resources available. Sometimes the question might be tricky by not uh, saying or but not telling you that this one is the incorrect word. But for the good curriculum, it promotes uh, the continuity of experience because of the continuous provision and revision of the curriculum. Okay? So this one, it's for the maximum provision for the development of each learner. Okay? That's pretty good. That's pretty nice. Wow. We're all good now. Okay. I'm really excited to know your scores well. So please do whatever it takes to make this in perfect mode. Okay. Okay. Number 12. Okay. Number 12. So which of the following statements best describes metacognition as a strategy for curriculum? Augmentation. Is it letter A, B, C, or D?
Come on, give give your answers in twelve. <laughs> Okay, so we have your uh, letter. Oh, what's the keyword in his this one? Best describe metacognition as a strategy for curriculum augmentation. Metacognition, it talks about what? <laughs> metacognition, I'm pretty sure you know this, <laughs> right? So definitely, we have here thinking about thinking, thinking beyond thinking. Parang reading beyond the lines na you know what does what does the text means like? Okay. So for this one, how about learning strategies for success? Although it's really it's really good to be true, right? For letter A, but is it something related to method cognition? So definitely not. How about this one? Learning through computer-aided instruction. Does it talk about cognition, computer-aided instruction? Although you may think for that, no? for how to navigate the features, but it does not uh, uh, subscribe preponderantly to metacognition, right? So for this one, we can now scrap letter B. How about letter C? It is learning through interaction with the environment. So it is more on the aspect of the behaviorism, right? So for the behaviorism, we alter our context and scenario because of the environmental influences. So the correct answer here is letter D. Okay, so that means that for the method recognition, we talk about how students think and we have to make strategies in order to spell out the thinking or to improve the thinking of the students. So that is a strategy. You know, that is a strategy for students. Okay. We have very, it is uh, also how to learn in thinking about how one thinks. How do you think? How do students think? So if you thinking think about this thinking processes of students then you're going to explore that strategy in or you're going to explore that strategy and to craft activities for their thinking okay that's all right okay i'm pretty seeing correct answers in here you're all good and amazing okay so this one we have here number 13 so at the elementary level English literature and social studies relate well. Well, history is being studied, different literary pieces during the historical period are being studied as well. What curriculum design is shown here? So we have here the types and patterns of the curriculum. So is it the broad field design? Is it the correlation discipline or separate subject design timer starts now Okay, <laughs> so for this one, what are the subjects being talked about? Okay, so this one we have, wait, where's that? Where's my pen? Okay, so this one we have the English literature and social studies. Okay, so this one is what we call the 
history being studied in different literary pieces. Example, Homer, Iliad, and Odyssey during the historical period are being studied as well. So what were the literary pieces during this period? So we have here the integration now of literature and the social study. Okay? So we have here the literature and the social study. So what curriculum design is shown in here? Is it about the broad field design? Mm -hmm. Separate subject design? No, it should not be the separate subject design. Because uh, there are two subjects there. Right? There are no two subjects na. So definitely, uh, how about broad fields design? We can eliminate first the options, diba? Broad field designs, we can eliminate this. From the word cell, broad fields, there are many subjects in this. Then we can now just integrate this one. Okay? Then we have also the correlation and discipline design. So which should be, uh, what should be the answer in here? Is it the correlation? Is it the discipline design? So the answer here is, so this one, Correlation, you just have to integrate this to a specific subject. Okay. Then for the discipline, so that means it's my. So for this one, for the discipline design, it this could be across or can be per subject. So therefore, it is the discipline design. Okay. So for the this one for the discipline design is best suited for this because different subjects have relations according to the respective areas for discussion. Hence, the subject is not really that compartmentalized, and hence they break barriers for contents and in the interdisciplinary approach in teaching. Okay. So that means for the discipline design. Okay, number 14, we have here the teacher Zach emphasizes his students' immediate felt interest and needs and not on the anticipated needs and interests. Okay, so make sure of the keywords, huh? Don't forget the keywords, uh, immediate felt and needs and not the anticipated needs. Okay. So we have here, what type of curriculum does the teacher Bert adhere to? Is it culture-based, experience-centered, learner, or subject? Timer starts now. Take note of the keywords. Okay, boards up, boards up. What's your answer? What's your answer in here? Okay, so let's have this one. We have here the emphasizes the needs. Uh, we'll use my third eye. <laughs> but my father. <laughs> Immediate felt, uh, felt interest and needs and not on the anticipated needs or interest. Does it talk about, okay, let's do the elimination. Does it talk about culture? 
does it talk about culture? No. So, yan. We can eliminate now culture. Okay? How about this one? Does it talk about subject? Mm, no. No. Hindi rin naman siya nagtotalk about subject, right? Okay, so this one, it's experience. So we have to examine, is the question more about, talk about, more about experience or the learner? So it says, teacher Zach emphasizes students' immediate felt needs and interests and not on the anticipated needs. So does it talk about the learners? Yes, definitely, diba? It talks about the, no, that's why we have your teacher Zach. Diba? Pero this one, does it talk about the needs and interest or the experience of these learners? Hmm? Immediate felt and the needs and not on the anticipated needs. O, ganun lang naman tayo mag-analyze ano, mag ng question. No? Kung ikaw si teacher, gusto mo makita yung needs in, 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 needs and interest ng students mo and not on the anticipated needs. So, does it talk about the learner? Yes, but it's more about what? It, it's, a, it's for the learners, but it's more about their needs and their interests. Okay? So, it does not talk about the needs and in, uh, it does talk about the needs and interests. Therefore, teacher Zach is subscribed to the idea of the experience-based curriculum. So we have here the experience-based curriculum because this encompasses the discovery and inquiry among the diverse learners' interests and needs. No? And this learning will be effective if used and students' interests are the starting and guiding points points of every learning episode or the activity. Okay? So, this one, anticipated needs, not on the anticipated needs of the learners. <clears throat> okay? So, don't forget that one. Okay? So, what, this, uh, what does the question or the stem of the question usually subscribe to? So it does not heavily subscribe to the learners per se. Okay? So it talks about their experiences, their needs, and their interests. So if that's the case, that's experience-centered uh, curriculum. Okay? Okay, number 15. Okay. Number 15, one example of this sub, one example of this subject curriculum, centered curriculum design shows social studies uh, combined with geography, civics, culture, and history to comprise the subject. Which design is this? What, what, which design is this? Okay, ito madali na lang to guys. If you know the concept of this, you'll get this correctly. For sure. Kala ko tama na. Oh, answer, Nedali. I want to see your answer. I'm pretty sure you want to know if your answer is correct. What's your answer with this? Okay. Uh, sino na yung gusto nating tanggalin dito muna? 
So sabi natin, com- social studies combined with geography, civics, culture, history to comprise subject to comprise the subject area. Definitely, wala na kaagad sa separate subject. Correlated just to, no? So that means we have here the core and the broad fields design. So for the core kasi, you have here the idea, then we have here many subjects correlate on that single idea. Okay? So for example, the concept of peace can be integrated in English, math, science, mape. So something like that. So if that's the case, we have here the core design. But if we have here the different subjects, then under the one umbrella, okay, just like of the social studies or social sciences, diba? like social sciences, an example for that, we have here the economics, economics, uh, politics, law, psychology, ano pa? Mm, economics, politics, law, psychology, arts, and even the arts. No? So for the social uh, anthropology, um, anthropology, then the archaeology. Sociology. Sociology. Okay. You know, D, Kalong. Okay. So, this one is. La. Bakit ganyan yung mga sagut nyo? So, the correct answer here is letter. Mm, so, the character, uh, the answer here is letter. A very good. <laughs> okay, so we have here the letter A. So congratulations. This is a really broad fields, broad fields design po tayo. Okay, and even in English, right? We have here the uh, for English uh, can be a broad field like the letter. Uh, we have here the grammar, syntax, the but the literature, lexical, semantics. Syntactics. So those are some of the things or subjects, lexical, uh, that we can uh, use for the broad fields design. Okay. So, marami bang nakatama? So, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah, tumpak. Very good. Diba? So, na few will get your motivation. Nyo. So, let's see for number 16. Drum roll, please. <laughs> okay, we have in for number 16. So, which design is easy to deliver because complementary books and materials are commercially available? Uh, which design is easy to deliver because complementary books and materials are commercially available. Okay, so for this one, boards up, boards up, sixteen. Okay, so how are books available right now? Is it by experience centered? Is it possible for us to have the experience centered complementary books? For experience, for the part of students. 
but for this one, we have the activity based, but it's not experience centered design. Okay? Because so for the books, kasi, it is based for what? How are books sold? Is it by experience, by problem, by process, or by subject? Ganun na lang yung tanungan natin. Pasimple natin. Is it by experience? Uh, how are books sold? Is it by experience, by problem, by process, or by subject? Mm-hmm. Definitely, it's... Is it letter A? Is it letter B? By problem-centered design? Do we have a problem-centered design or... Uh, for this one, commercially available for books. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the correct answer here is by subject centered design okay so definitely this one this uh, the books are sold for each subject so we have here by english math science diba? uh filipino social studies so we have the subject centered Design for books. So, available siya per subject. Okay? So, if you avail this book, biology, biology. Math book, math book. Okay? Okay. We have your math book, math book. We have your the science book, science book. Okay? Okay, very good. Okay, number 17, uh, teacher Sally, uh, make sure that the content is based on the planned learning experiences that match the vision and mission of the institution. Following Tyler's model, what is her primary consideration? Timer starts now. Number 17. How about others? So please key in your answers in the chat box so that you may know if your answer is correct or maybe you're just using your pad sheet or paper to write or to encode your answers. That would be all right also. Okay, for number 17, so what's your answer? Okay, so for this one, we have here the Tyler's model. Ralph Tyler, okay? So we have here the primary consideration. Uh, if you don't know Tyler's model, uh, just uh, read this one, you know? It will give you a guidance. No, it will have the clue for you. Content is based on the planned learning experiences that match the vision, mission. Oh, learning experiences, vision, mission of the institution. So your keyword here is the learning experiences, vision, mission of the institution. So is it about educational experiences? Does it talk about the educational experiences? No. So, wala na ka planned learning experiences that match the vision mission of the school. That match though the vision mission of the school. Is it letter A? Sige, sige sabi natin, may word na experience. Eh. Baka naman, di ba? How about organization? Although my experience, does it talk about organization? O basahin mo ito nang pa ulit-ulit. There is a content based on the planned learning experience that measures vision, vision of the school. Hmm. Asan yung vision, mission ng school dito? Wala. So we can cancel. Di ba? 
we can cancel this one. Okay, how about this one? Letter C, evaluation of experience. Does it talk about the vision, mission of the school? Mm -hmm. How about this one? Purposes of the school. Pwede, di ba? So we have here, pwede for the purposes of the school. So based on the learning experiences that match the vision of the school. So this one, following that, if you know Tyler, uh, Tyler's model, so this is the first step. This is the first step. But when we say the plan, diba pag plan, it's not yet carried out. So this is the, considered as the first step. So among the options, no? among the options, which one is should be the first? Is it about the purposes of the school? Or is it about the educational experiences related to the uh, purposes? So this one, when we have the plan, it is the first stage. So the first stage here is letter D. Very good. So we have here, pag planning pa lang, wala pa tayong ginagawa, di ba? Planning stage pa lang eh. So therefore, it's the purposes of the school. Okay. That's all right. So we have here the purposes of the school. How about number 18? So what is the primary question in examining a curriculum? What is the primary question in examining the curriculum? So timer starts now. Yan ah, primary questions. Baka sabihin nyo, all questions, all options are good to be through. Diba? Are good to be true. Okay, time's up. Time is up. Okay. When crafting a curriculum, what is the primary consideration? In any curriculum, pag nakakita kayo ng curriculum, so for example, oh, parang lahat naman to ay tama. No? Siyempre, all options are good to be through. Diba? But when you see a curriculum, what is the first thing that you see? So definitely the first thing that you see in the curriculum, we have here the, yeah, very good. So we have here the objectives, right? So course objectives. So that's the first thing that you have to do. Just like in lesson plan, you know, for the principles of teaching, we have to uh, set a target. And that is in the course of lesson objectives. Okay, so for this time, if it is by subject, it's a course objective. So for this one, which is some question kaya yung may objectives dito. Is it letter A? Pwede. How about letter B? Mm -hmm. Letter C? Mm -hmm. Letter D? Mm -hmm. So the correct answer now is letter A. Very good. It's letter A. Yeah. So we have here D. What educational purposes should the school seek to attain? Okay, number 19. So which is not a part of the grassroots approach of Hilda Taba? Is it about the selection of technology, content learning experiences? So timer starts now.
Okay. So, grassroots approach of Hilda Taba. Okay, so the correct answer here is letter A. So we have here the selection of content. Okay, so we have here the Hilda Taba grassroots approach. And the first stage for this is we have here the diagnosis of needs. Diba? But for this one, uh, we have here the next content or parts like the selection of learning environment, experiences, and the content. But the thing of this, uh, this, the selection of technology is not part of the grassroots approach. Okay, so for the grassroots, appro uh, grassroots approach is understand the needs of the learners before planning for an instruction. That's why uh, it's a bottom-up process. It's just a bottom-up procedure. Okay, so that's why we have here the grassroots bottom-up. Therefore, from learners to teachers, then the teachers will have to frame the curriculum. Right? Then we have here the selection of content experiences and environment. But for this one, uh, mostly our curriculum is top-down, right? Because it came from the national government, from the Department of Education, down to the uh, regional offices, then the division, the district, and then the school level. Then this uh, actually modifies in the classroom the actual way by which we communicate the instruction to the students. Okay, so which of the following statements is the basis of the technical scientific approach? Which is the basis of the technical scientific approach? Is it letter A, B, C, or D? Okay, so for this one, in order to answer this, what is technical scientific approach? So for the technical scientific approach, it is the this one focuses on the knowledge, uh, knowledge and acquisition, and what is important for the students to gain. So the curriculum is structured in a step by step manner in order to optimize students' learning and to allow their increase. Uh, output increase, okay? So we have here the output augmentation. So for the technical, because we are going through the steps or the property uh, steps or ways, so it must be sequential, okay? So which one would be the best answer? So what is your answer to this? Is it about letter A, B, the common, then they participate in the curriculum? How about this one? When teachers share, uh, share in shaping the goals and evaluating the results and involvement is trivial. Hmm. I see different answers. Is it letter D? Is the basis, huh? is it letter A, is it letter B, is it letter C, letter D? Dahil, <laughs> so the correct answer here is, so the correct answer here is, hello, your mind is already saturated. <laughs> So the curriculum 
uh, will improve as the professional competence of the of teacher improves. Okay, why do you think so? Because when they uh, when they expose to different environment, because they have the competence for this, uh, we have here the uh, professional competence, de ba? So this one, because we have here mostly leaning to negative, may, they misunderstand each other. The competence of when they, when they participate in the curriculum development, do they participate? They, they, they contribute. They influence the curriculum. Okay? They influence the curriculum. But uh, to the way that they participate, I mean, talagang nasa table discussion, definitely students. No? no. Because they are the consumers of the curriculum. Eh, right? Kaya nga, tayo nagkakaroon, kaya nga tayo may curriculum is for them. Hindi, yo, hindi sila for the curriculum development. Okay? So this one, trivial kasi. Trivial, something unimportant. So meaning of trivial, it's unimportant. Diba? Or mi minimal. Yeah. Their involvement is important, not that good or not that uh, influence much. Okay? So do we have your letter? Okay. Sometimes you really have to read, no? Although nakakapagod magbasa, pero when you see, they will misunderstand. So definitely eliminate mo na kaagad yan, di ba? So this one will improve when they participate. In the... Do they actually participate? No. But they are consumers kasi of the curriculum. Although they are part of stakeholders, right? But they don't actually participate for that. So this one is trivial. So letter A tayo. Choice... Choose the best. Choose the best answer. Okay, how do parents participate in the shaping the curriculum? More answer. <laughs> Is it letter A, B, C, or D? So timer starts now. Okay. No oras na ba? Oh my gosh. Kalahati pa lang. Gawin natin 30. Uh, ang ang pag-ano ko po sa brain ko renta 1000 per minute char Lumabas yung answer agad ba yan <laughs> Okay we have very <laughs> Yes, the correct answer here is oh, why do parents, if you're the parents, uh, how do you shape the curriculum? Do you design the more curriculum? Although you're part of the stakeholders, you don't design, diba? Actually, you don't design uh, part of the stakeholders. You don't design the curriculum, okay? So as function of the parents, you're... Uh, follow up the lesson of the children. Yes, that's letter B. They assist the teachers in writing the lesson plan. Wow, very good. They serve for best the curriculum implementation. Siyempre, this is for the administrators, di ba? Administrators or the curriculum managers. Diba? So that means it's letter B. May nagkamali pa ba ng number sa number 21? Bala kayo. Okay, so we have here number 22. The schools and communities are committed to predetermined measurable criteria for student learning. Which statement does best describe schools that will ensure the attainment of such criteria? Wala pong discount. Student discount, 20. Ram na lang ng virtue, sir. Virtue? <laughs> uh, 
Answer, answers. For number 22. Okay. Predetermined schools and communities. You know, for school and communities of learners, they are what? Of learners are committed for student learning. So they are called the stakeholders. They are the stakeholders. So which statement does best describe schools that will assure the attainment for, of, of ensure the attainment of such criteria? Ano bang function ng school and communities? Ano bang function ng school and communities? Okay. So we have here the schools and communities as partners, no? For student learning. They all uh, they are all, you know, sanib forces. They are all geared towards the learning of students. Okay. Families and encourage. Does this talk about family? Does this talk about family? No. So, wala ka agad to. How about letter B? Teachers and administration do a regular evaluation uh, for the student achievement. Is there such, such thing as evaluation here? Is there an evaluation here? Measurable criteria? So again, let's see. Okay, letter B. Okay, about to continually update themselves by attending training programs. Does this talk about the communities? So, okay, eliminate natin letter C, no? How about everyone in school is accountable for student outcomes? How about everyone in the school is accountable for student outcomes? Yes, no? We have heard this one. That's why we are here in the community of learners, no? So, for this one, okay, let's analyze. Kaya, syempre, na-narrow down na natin yung choices, no? Uh, schools and communities of learners, no? Are committed for this one, uh, for the measurable quality criteria for student learning. Describe schools. Schools now. Um, this describes school. So, da, para kanino dapat yung option natin? Para kanino this one? Kasi this one is just the, ano, the scenario or the universe of the question. Pero this one, this, the question tells which statement does best describe schools? San, ano daw yung best describe sa school? Is it letter B or letter D? Which one is more encompassing? So the answer here is letter D. Diba, guys? Tama ba yun? Tama ba yun? I mean, yeah, this one is the statement. But the, the question calls, which one does best describe schools? This one is about school. Pero it's about the personal inside the school. And the totality of the school is this one. And you know, for the stakeholders thing, so they are all uh, accountable for student outcomes. Okay? O ganun lang naman tayo mag-analyze ng questions. Diba? So let's make it match for the question the sa answer. Okay, which of the following statement best defines curriculum development? Ayan na naman tayo sa best definition. So all options are good to be through, but definitely only one is the best. Alam niyo naman, all options, di ba? Mm. 
Okay, boards up, boards up. Your answer, please, for number 23 is... Answer for 23 is letter... Curriculum development, ha? So, you know, for curriculum development, this encompasses the processes from planning, designing, implementing, diba? So... So, are you ready for, is it letter A? Total learning at a given time. Occur considered. The planning for center did. How these changes have occurred. Hmm. So, drum roll, please. So, the correct answer here is. Okay. So, the correct answer here is letter D. Very good. <laughs> All right, so that means we have here the letter D. Anything which socially creative, no. Total learning experiences, no. Although, yeah, yeah that's all right. Tama naman siya, but it's not the best. Can you say tell of in which all elements are considered? Yes. We have here the uh, planning opportunities. Then we have here the assess. Diba? I already mentioned this from the start for development. So we have your certain stages like from planning, designing, implementing, monitoring, evaluation, revision, change. Okay. 24. Why is there a need to pilot, test, or monitor and evaluate curriculum program, curricular programs? Timer starts now. Monitor and evaluate curricular programs. Wala lang. Gusto lang natin mag-pilot. Gusto lang mag-monitor. I think in letter V, that's the definition of the curriculum. Mm. Okay, so 24, it's letter. Now, why did, there is a need for this? So the, the answer here is, it's about the abilities of the students. No. Determine the strengths. Okay. To comply with the requirements. Sometimes it's for accreditation. That's why we evaluate. Yes. To know the problems and needs of the community. Mm -hmm. Is it about the community? And for the curriculum programs, it's for the school. So that leaves for letter B and C. Right? So why is it the need for the monitor evaluate for this? Is it about for the requirements and policies or about the strengths and weaknesses for this? So definitely it's letter B. Okay? So definitely it's letter B. It's about the strengths and weaknesses of the curriculum. Mm. Determine the strengths and weaknesses of the curriculum. Perfect. It's really right. It's really perfect. 25, so which of the following statements is a reason for the continuous appraisal of the existing curriculum at all levels? Okay, timer starts now. Tama na ba kaya? Why is there a need for the appraisal of the cur existing curriculum? Do our curricula the same as before? So definitely it changes, right?
Okay. Uh, yes, uh, we are also a review center. <laughs> That's why you're asking here. <laughs> okay, so for this one, uh, so for this one for 25, so the answer here is letter. Oh, what is the continuous appraisal? Bakit natin ni uh, yung curriculum, existing curriculum? Is it about the new national policies in the government? Mm -hmm. The economic status of the people? Is it may. Mm -hmm. The uh, changing needs of conditioned societies? Sige, pwede. How about political trust of the country? No. So the answer here is letter. A. Because we have very varying needs and the society changes from time to time. So we need to upscale our, our skills on this. Okay. Next, 26. So which of the following principles regarding curriculum alignment is correct? We have already curriculum al alignment. So what is the correct thing about this one? Ay, hindi ko pala na ano. Wait. Okay, drum roll, please. Drum roll. So the correct answer here is the correct answer here is letter curriculum alignment. So we have here the alignment uh, for this the the objectives, the instruction, and the assessment. So definitely it's letter A. Okay, so what has been uh, set in the objectives? What is being taught and what is being assessed? So dapat kung ano yung objectives mo, yun yung tinuro, ganun din yung assessment mo. Okay? So it means letter A. Very good. 27. The Filipino learners envisioned by the Department of Education in light of the K-12 curriculum is... Timer starts now. Ay, bien. So for this one, the correct answer here is letter Okay, so <laughs> Oh my gosh. Bakit ganun? Erg. Walang bonus let. Love niyo yan. <laughs> So for this one, uh, the correct answer is we have here the uh, functionally literate and logistically developed Filipinos. Okay, so this is enshrined in the K-12 curriculum. No, that's RA 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act. Okay, so the Enhanced Basic Education Act. 
scientifically advanced values oriented i think for one of the core values no maka just makatao makakalikasan makabansa for the deaf and technology literate mm -hmm. nationally oriented and internationally competitive mm -hmm. okay so this one begin Mag-reveal ng correct answer. Sige, pwede naman. Mag-reveal lagad ako. Di yan, nabasa ko. Di na yan, nabasa. Ay, sana all nababasa. But this one, it's a, it, for the national oriented. Mostly, this is the goal for the social studies. Okay? So, that is this one. Okay, how is values education offered in the national secondary education curriculum. So, madali lang to. So, timer starts now. Twenty-eight. Okay, so the correct answer here is letter D. So we have here as a separated subject. Before, it was integrated in all subject areas. Diba? So that's why we have here the effective part. But this one, it has been strengthened by offering it as a su separate subject. Okay, That's why we have this so-called the ESP. For elementary education, education sa pagpapakatao, values education naman po yun. Okay? That's a separate subject area. Okay, 29. Which of the following choices embodies the operation return to the basics? So it's really... Uh, tag dito. Easy. Number 29. Return to the basics. Return to the basics. When we say return to the basics, we are learning what? So this one, we're learning what for the basics? These are the essentials, right? So this is in car, uh, we have here the educational theory, the essentialism, the essential things in order to survive in this ever-changing world. Okay? So the uh, essential things as mandated by the government is the compulsory education. So if we have here the compulsory education, that is the elementary, right? So if that's the case, we can now delete this one, B and C, okay? So if that's the case, when we have here the return to the basics, we have to learn this. Is it about the test, right? We have here the three R's, right? So aside from the three R's, Diba, yung dinedevelop sa atin sa elementary, the foundational skills, reading, writing, arithmetic. We have here the spiraling. Therefore, it is the, what? It's, it is the learning. Therefore, it is the new education, new elementary school curriculum. So we have here the letter A. Very good. So we have here letter A. Lastly, uh, which of the following statements is not a reason why basic education curriculum has been restructured, which is not a reason? Is it letter A, B, C, or D? Why basic education curriculum uh, not a reason? why it has been restructured.
<laughs> okay, time's up. Time's up. So the correct answer here is letter letter D. So we have here to help raise the level uh, achievement level of parents, diba? For the achievement levels of parents, definitely they, they are the stakeholders, but it's not uh, they are not the consumers of the curriculum. So the consumers we have the learners. Okay, very good, very good for that. Actually, we're done with 30 items. Uh, this has been included in our final coaching sessions or the answers. But I also have other things but then naman to discuss with this. So let's continue para naman ano, for 10 items. Uh, mabilis ang sagot na lang po tayo from 31 to 40. So this is just bonus questions to you, but it will, it will help develop your test-taking skills or the strategy. Okay? Oh, why is that? My PowerPoint has stopped working. Oh, me. Oh, it. <laughs> Cortosis. The pickedness of the curve. 26 out of 30 okay oh, what's the uh what's the 75 percent of 30 items what's the 75 percent of 30 items so 30 times 0. 0.75 so 22.5 but we don't have 22.5 score so 23 23 is this pa passing score 23. <laughs> oh, may naka 31 out of 30. Sana all improper fraction. <laughs> so, yeah, sir, hanggang 30 lang. Oh, yeah. I don't know why my PowerPoint is crashed right now. So 22, 25 out of the 30. Wow, very good. Magayat naka 36. Sana all. Di ba? I'm just getting there, no? Pero it's just one part. You have different aspects but the review just like of the general education subject. Di ba? Then also for your majorship, if you are the secondary level, so that means 40%. But if you're in elementary, I think it's 60-40. Okay, so yeah, naka 27 yung iba. 24, very good. I'm sure I'm really proud no, in helping teachers like you to reach on top of it. Okay, 20, <laughs> 23. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, let me share my screen once again. This one will be quick na lang ah. I mean... Uh, tell the answer. I don't. Yeah. Oh, why it started from? Why it started from this? Okay. Well, so, which of the following statements about the concept of curriculum is not acceptable? What's your answer in here? So definitely. Kasi good, sir. Wait ako, sir. Susunod sa matalin. Okay. <laughs> Konti na lang, guys. It's letter C. Okay? So about the concept of curriculum is not acceptable. Uh, dapat maka eight naman kayo dito. So long before the start of the every school year, teacher Fred has already started developing comprehensive plan 
based on the recommended curriculum, which explains best teacher faith's action about the curriculum. Madalian na lang to guys. konting konti na lang. <laughs> faith's actions concerning the curriculum. So he, uh, she developed, uh, she's developing comprehensive plan based on the recommended, just like of the Department of Education. Therefore, it is letter C. Okay, very good. So planning reduces possibilities. That's why of leading astray of the curriculum. Third three. Mr. Santos, a new teacher, believes that education is a process development and life itself. Therefore, experience related to the child's needs and to interest should be considered. So what is the educational philosophy being exhibited by Mr. Santos? What is the educational philosophy being exhibited by Mr. Santos in this? O kung kuha lang kayo ng keyword dito, we have here the education uh, is a development of life itself. So if you know this one, interest of the student, according to John Dewey, di ba? education is not a preparation of life, but it should be life itself. Okay? So it should be life itself. So, kung ikaw, kung you know John Dewey, he is subscribed into what philosophy? Halakayo. So, that means it's progressivism. So, this one, same with the principle of the teacher, new teacher, process of development and life itself. Education is life itself. It's not a preparation of life. That's according to John Dewey. And you know, John Dewey is a very known uh, educa uh, educational theorist and uh, progressivist. Okay. 34, what, uh, what design element establishes the vertical linkage from level to level to avoid glaring gaps and wasteful overlaps? Glaring gaps and wasteful overlaps. Linkage. Is it about linkage or vertical linkage? Glaring gaps? Is it about balance? Hmm? Is it about scope? Hmm? How about sequence? Right? The articulation? Yeah. So definitely this one for the design element for glaring gaps. To avoid glaring gaps and wasteful overlaps, we have here the articulation. For the articulation, mostly for the vertical alignment, vertical and horizontal. For vertical, uh, science uh, spiraling in each level. No? Pag horizontal, same level po ng knowledge or difficulty in each level. And if we have, definitely for each level, it's an increasing level of difficulties. Next one. So the curriculum is defined as the total learning experiences of the children in school. So which part of the curriculum assures these experiences? Naman. Which uh, part of the curriculum assures these experiences? So definitely experiences, no? So hindi na siya about planning. Diba? How about this one? Designing? Pag designing, content pa lang yun, di ba? So, wala. So, that leaves you C and D. How about this one? Total learning experiences. Does it talk about this one? Evaluation? Hmm? So, this one, that means it's already being communicated to the students. Therefore, it's curriculum implementation. So, the students are actually... Uh, making sure or actually experiencing the curriculum. So, in experience na nila. <laughs> Imagine, oh, sana all experience. Okay, so for number 36, teacher Anna, 
would like to develop subject-centered curriculum because she believes that all subjects in this curriculum are geared towards the learner's holistic development. Is her belief about subject-centered curriculum true? Anong sagot niyo muna? So sabi niya subject-centered, tapos sabi geared towards learner's the holistic development. Ang sagot dyan is yes or no. So, kung yes ang sagot nyo, A and B na lang options nyo. Kung no ang sagot nyo, C and D na lang. So, sabi niya, subject-centered, learners holistic. So, definitely, it's a no. Right? So, wala na tayong A and B. So, ano nga yung sagot natin? So, pipili tayo kung anong time explanation. So, because it is experience-centered that emphasizes on teaching facts for further for future use, Mm -hmm. For teaching facts daw, experience-centered, tama ba yun? Or experience-centered, not subject-centered, that emphasizes in integrating habits and learning the knowledge component of the subject areas. So kung ganun, it's about what? Uh, this one is no, but the explanation is not correct. So therefore, it's letter D. Very good. 37. So which of the following primary roles can Mr. Fred at school district supervisor district supervisor and school board member gives to the school? So Mr. Fred Dow, so stakeholder sha district uh, supervisor and school board member. Is it about this one, authorized school expenditures for curriculum uh, development, implementation, and evaluation. Mm -hmm. Support parent and participate in parent uh, organization activities. Although all items are good to be true. No? Pero tingnan natin, what is something distinct for Mr. Friend? No? How about legislation? Mostly policy makers na to eh, no? So national level, wala na to. Yes, abot pa daban. Pag may alam. Letter E. <laughs> so wala na to letter C natin. How about recommend curriculum changes? Pwede naman. So which of the following is this one? The primary roles? What are the primary roles to give to the school? Parent teacher, or we can so ano this one because teachers and students as teachers and parents both for letter B. Diba? Although he can support there. So that leaves letter A or letter D. So which one is the uh, primary role of Mr. Fred, the school district supervisor? So this one. <laughs> Pwede ba yan? School expenditure about finances? Or about this one, about the curriculum changes? So definitely it's letter D. So we have here the recommendation uh, for the changes. 38, the curriculum can be either horizontally or vertically arranged. So, so which follows a horizontal alignment or arrangement. Horizontal, syempre, you know, like this one, a flat line. For columns, vertical. So example, grade, uh, we have your science subjects in grade one, Two, three, four, uh, no, 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 wala pa ng science sa grade one. So, so let's say grade seven, eight, nine, ten. Pag ganyan, or, uh, pag ganyan, vertical. But if we're talking about the grade seven, that is a, a horizontal. So we have your science, we have your the math, we have your the English. We are here the English. So, the answer here is letter D. This one, we have already ling uh, linguistics, grammar, etymology, phrases. 
This is a discipline designed at Broadfields, de ba, for the English. Uh, history, geography, civics, ganun din. Family, community, no. So this one, ver- horizontal arrangement. Therefore, we have here the math, science, and the Filipino. Okay? Okay, malapit na. So this one, we have your number 39. What is the primary consideration in understanding by design UBD approached by McTakehe and Wiggins? What is the primary consideration when understanding by design? So the correct answer here is Yeah, so the correct answer here is letter A. So we have here the desired results. That's why it is a uh, understanding by design or this is the backward approach. Okay? We want to see the desired results before planning for instruction. Okay? Before planning for instruction, therefore, it is the understanding by backward design. So understanding backward design nga the way, UBD, by Maktighe and Wiggins. So let's start with the uh, desired results. Diba? So that is the first stage. Yeah, that's all right. We have your letter A. In a 40 last number, so the use of mother tongue based multilingual education in basic education curriculum means that the learners what? Means that the learners what's your answer? Is it letter A, B, C, or D? What's the essence of having this mother tongue design? Wala lang. <laughs> so mother tongue based in ed- a basic education curriculum, it means that it's, l- is it letter B? Mm-hmm. This one for MTB, MLE, it's from grades one to three. Diba? So if you're teaching elementary, so is a, uh, so this one uh, are not allowed to learn the second or third language. Mm-hmm. Should she immediately master the second language or letter A shift only? So the correct answer for this, of bakit tayo may MTBLE for this? Because we want to learn the basics or the mastery of our language before shifting and also the foundational skills and understanding those uh, things or knowledge. So therefore, it's letter A. Very good. B, 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 B. <laughs> so it's letter A. So shift only to the second language after the mastery of the first language. And the, ma- and the first language is the Filipino, right? So that's why we had to master our own language before learning English. So that's mother tongue based multilingual education. Okay, so that's all right, uh, teachers. Thank you for tuning in and also for this time. May I just saw your responses? How many? Naman yung nakuha nyo dito. Or you can have this one addition of the previous. May... So wala naman. Hmm. Okay, so for this one, I'll see you next time. Okay, so have a great night to all of you. So good luck to your licensure examination for teachers. So I'm pretty sure that you are all be good and amazing. It's 8 over 10. Wow, that's 80%. So I'm really proud and I really want to help you because we are all teachers. We are all students. We all have something to give and we all have something to learn. So once again, I'm Professor Glenn. Have a good night to all of you. I wish you success in your licensure examination and getting that license. Okay? 
So have a have a great week. Ah, have a great weekend. Have a great rest. Have a great night ahead. Bye bye. See you soon.